Well, my mama raised us all the same. She was very hard on us, you know, especially me. Like, I remember in head, I went to Head Start. Most people go to preschool. I went to Head Start. And uh, I, was, I learned how to, my mama forced me how to read and write and, like, do my math problems and stuff like that. I, I learned the dishes, subtraction, division, and multiplication at a very young age. Because she beat it into me, you know what I'm saying? Like, if I got something wrong, I'd get whooping. It got mm. to the point where even, at, you know, at this um, this this youth center I used to stay at sometimes, um, if my mom would give me, she'd give me math problems, and she gave them instructions that, hey, if Mo can't get all these right and doesn't get the words I wrote down right, um, you know what I'm saying, because I had to pronounce these words and say what words they was, if I got them wrong, they had the permission to beat me, you know what I'm saying? So I used to get whoopings at home and at, and at, the, at the youth center. So it's crazy, but my mom just chooses real hard on me, and uh, just she wanted she wanted excellence. And I fell short many, many times. Yeah, so you actually got a few, I'm sure got a few lickings in um, early in your life. I mean, why did she do that? What? what why was she so uh, convinced that that was the way to do it? Because that's how she made it to this country, you know what I'm saying? Like, uh, it wasn't for academics, she would never made it here, and she would have still been struggling in Africa. And she and she said like she's like hey I'm a black female a single black female foreigner I can't raise no dummies I have my kids have to be smart because you know they're in the south and she already knew like we're, we're looked at as like you know like 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 we're less like you no know, we weren't like we're looked at like we're below you know what I'm saying everybody else like you know I remember one time in school I had a friend named Jay Mont and he stood up in class and was like hey teacher. You know, um, black people are, are, are niggers and white people are honkies. And the teacher's like, yeah, yes, Jay Mott, you're right, sit down. So <laughs> I, 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 I grew up seeing stuff like that, you know what I'm saying? And my mom was like, look, you're black, they look, they look down on you, so you have to be black and smart and intelligent, and you can't be a dummy, because you're a dummy, you'll end up being broken homeless. And that's what she taught, that's what she taught, taught us, and she, that's what she was hard on me, because it starts with the oldest. So you, you're hard on the oldest, and you pass out... The, the the youngest watch you uh, watch the oldest and uh, I'm a, I was a role model to my brother and sister and so I had to I had to do what she, she would do what she taught me. Mo, to hear you say that that scene of of your friend standing up in class and saying those things, I think it's important for listeners to know. I mean, you're 30. You were born in 1981. Yeah. This is this is in the 1980s that people were were yeah. talking like that. I mean, I, I think a lot of maybe parts of the country don't realize that there was that kind of attitude going on still in this country in the 1980s. Well, the thing is, like, another thing is, like, the things I knew with my daddy, my daddy, he, he hated white people. You know what I'm saying? He was like, Mo, if you don't, he's like, Muhammad, my son, if you don't make it, like, just know you didn't make it because you're black. And I was like, what do you mean? He's like, he's like, white people don't like black people doing good. And I was like, I don't, I didn't understand. And, and he's like, so he'd be like, you know, just know, you know, you're black and you're probably black. And he, you know, and you know, song "I'm Black and I'm Proud." He be like, he be like, all right. When I say say it loud, you say I'm black and I'm proud. So he be like, every time that we got, he's like, say it loud. And I'm like, I'm black and I'm proud. He like, say it loud. And he be having me yell that, dog, like for real. And he was just, he didn't trust white people. Like you know, he he trusted few. Like if he would not, he had, like, inter, like interact with white folks unless they had something in common with them. Like if they like boxing, or they like okra, or they like like. You know, chicken or something like that, or cashews. That's the only time that he interacted with them. But other than that, like he was kind of like, I don't like to deal with them. It's like I don't like to talk to them. I don't like to be around them. Wow. Okra, chicken, cashews, and boxing. Yeah. That's that's some specific stuff right there. Because my daddy was a Muslim, so really most people he kicked it with or he hung out with were other Muslims. You know, like like it, it is weird. You know. Because in the South, the, the Muslim does not mean does not mean Muslims at all. So he was, my mom was a Muslim. He was a Muslim, and uh, it was just you know, I, I just remember that you know the, the imam, the imam would come through, and uh, they'd pray. You know, so I remember them praying, and I just be sitting there watching them. 